With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Gregory Rousseau, defensive end, Miami. I'm happy for this kid. This kid opted out this year. His mom was a nurse and dealt with, dealt with COVID. It was very real to Gregory Rousseau. That's why he opted out, wanted to take care of his mother. So he goes to his pro day, does not have a great pro day. There's some thought he could slide. He was my top edge rusher. I put him as my number two guy. As Daniel Jeremiah stated, Rousseau slid in the first round, likely because of his pro day showing. And if you watch it back, you can see why. Rousseau's coordination was disjointed and his change of direction looked sluggish and it reflected in his testing numbers. Luckily for the Bills, teams were scared away from what many believed to be one of the best pass rushers in the draft, all because of the testing and one year of production. Production that included 46 total pressures and 15 and a half sacks. Based on the Bills prototypes, Rousseau hit a lot of measurables they look for in height, weight, speed, length, and hand size but the poor testing in the agility drills like the three cone and short shuttle, much like the rest of the league, appeared to hurt his chances of being drafted by the Bills. But Bean didn't let those drills change his opinion on the player, because he prioritized Russo's film and explosiveness. One of the ways teams measure explosiveness is a 10 yard split, and Rousseau was in the pole position in this year's draft as far as that metric goes. His agility may have been in question, but I think after you watch this video, you will see how the bad testing doesn't really represent the player on the field. The film shows us that Rousseau was the perfect fit based on measurables and his skill set. A skill set that will be a weapon for Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott. He is, he's big, he's fast, he's strong, but you know, his athletic ability allows him to play on the outside at DN, on the inside at nickel package at, at nose tackle, and he caused a lot of problems for offensive fronts. In his last year at Miami, Rousseau was used mainly as an edge defender, with nearly 80% of his snaps coming from the outside, but his sack totals were about the same compared to his work as a defensive tackle. This is mainly because he was slid inside in passing situations. Almost all of his snaps from a defensive tackle spot were against the pass, and he was deadly when affecting the quarterback from the inside, converting an absurd 50% of his pressures into sacks. The Hurricanes weaponized Rousseau's hustle, length, and finish on money downs, by using him inside as a defensive tackle. And he was relatively fresh coming off of the bench, something he did for the first five games of the 2019 season. He didn't get a start until week seven against Virginia. His get off and length can present issues for interior offensive linemen, making it pretty easy for Rousseau to create havoc up the middle. Sometimes those guys are a little bit stronger and a little bit less athletic and more like heavy guys who want to like just like uh, just pancake you and stuff like that. So sometimes I feel like that helps me out too. Yeah, and, and also getting extension on them too. The Bills love versatility, especially defensive ends that can kick down inside to rush in sub packages. Rousseau's skill set is ideal in those scenarios. His lateral stride and explosion, something we will talk about a lot, allows him to quickly jump gaps to gain leverage on the offensive lineman. On the snap, the line slides to their left with Rousseau slanting against the grain. His stride quickness and hand usage make it difficult for the guard to redirect his momentum to help pick up Rousseau. You see the same thing here. By the time the guard realizes that the linebacker isn't rushing, Rousseau's lateral then vertical stride stress the guard. Once he turns the corner, he senses the quarterback getting ready to throw the ball. So he uses his 34 and 3 8 arm length to cause a fumble. Kudos to the Hurricanes coaching staff, one that includes defensive line coach Todd Stroud, a coach that mentored Mario Williams, Manny Lawson, and John McCargo in the mid 2000s while at NC State. The Canes defensive staff understood their opponent's third down blocking tendencies and attacked them with Rousseau. The alignment alone stresses the guard's kick slide, but when you add the length and stride to the equation, you can see how he can create mismatches. On this third and 14 play, Rousseau is in another wide defensive tackle alignment and is part of a three-man game. He and the defensive end are the penetrators, with the linebacker being the looper. On the snap, Rousseau attacks the outside hip of the guard but then drives hard into the A-gap. This sudden movement causes the guard to fire his hands. The redshirt freshman violently swats down the high hands of the guard and rips through the block. He catches the attention of the quarterback and the signal caller tries sliding to his left, but the looping linebacker has him hemmed in. So the quarterback steps up where Russo is there to assist. Similar scenario here with Russo slanting to his left and using a touch and go move on the guard. Florida State's offensive line was quite possibly the worst in the FBS in 2019, 
so it won't be this easy for Rousseau at the next level. But his natural traits should allow the Bills staff to create mismatches in certain situations. And just because he's aligned at defensive end doesn't mean that he can't get matched up against a guard. On this play, he slants inside as he processes run to pass. The line slides to the right and once Rousseau recognizes it's a pass, he quickly transitions to a rusher by attacking the B-gap, then uses a swim move to clear the lineman to generate a pressure. His lateral agility and stride are so smooth that often it goes unnoticed. Watch this play as the offensive tackle utilizes an aggressive pass set. The tackle is on him quickly so he counters with quick hands and a karaoke rush. The karaoke step is Rousseau essentially running sideways, which helps him because he isn't the most bendy or athletic rusher, so he doesn't have to attack upfield, bend and run the hoop at an extreme angle. Rousseau gets a QB to step up and his teammates rally. Here's another example of his stride being a difference maker. On the snap, Rousseau attacks upfield and begins his run to pass processing. It's right around that second step that he slows down the pace of his rush to determine if it's a run or pass. That also stresses the tackle because Rousseau could easily slant inside like he routinely does. Once he realizes it's a pass, he extends his stride just as the tackle shoots his hands. But to get an idea of his stride length, I highlighted the hash marks. In one stride, Rousseau can cover just about two yards. Rousseau manipulates his stride past the tackle, seals the leverage with a rip, then bends and circles up the pocket for the sack. Just an incredible display of his natural gifts. Over the course of the draft season, a narrative began to form that devalued guys like Rousseau's production. Fans and analysts clung to the statistic. A very muddied statistic that began to paint Rousseau's hurries, QB hits, and sacks as gimmies. But the problem with statistics are that you lose a lot of context. Come on, we all know that unblocked, pursuit, or cleanup pressures are not the same. And I believe fans began to conflate them this draft season. For example... Pursuit pressures are extremely valuable at the next level. You know, can they change direction? Can they redirect? They're rushing, you know, hard to their left, and all of a sudden the ball goes out to their right. How quickly can they redirect and get out there to at least force a throw? Maybe they don't make the sack, but force the guy to throw it or get him down before it becomes, you know, a wide open loose play, you know, behind him. Did I see a fair amount of pursuit or clean up pressures? Yes, and I don't see that as a bad thing. Because as you will see, he plays with effort, hustle, and tenacity. He understands that he isn't going to win every rep, but what separates him from others is his effort. But mostly still, a lot of times, just like it's really just effort. Because you, you could do a move, and it could like not work, and then you just keep fighting, and you just keep running to the ball, and then good things happen. So let's add some context to pursue or clean up sacks. Was a running back working to the opposite side of Rousseau? Yes. Did the defensive tackle initially disrupt the play? Yes. Did Rousseau's tenacity and effort earn him half a sack? Absolutely, and that is extremely valuable. Watch Rousseau slant inside, execute a swim move against the guard, and have to work through two linemen and a hold to bring the QB down. Why devalue this type of pressure? Here's a strip sack that was probably filed as a cleanup sack. On this third and 10 play from Rousseau's first start at defensive end, the running back is assigned to chip the near defensive end. So Rousseau's running mate Jonathan Garvin was left one on one, and he quickly won his matchup, but was unable to finish the play. But it was Rousseau's ability to pry open the blocks by the tackle and running back, track the quarterback, and pounce when the opportunity arose that ended this play. It's not often that we talk about a defensive lineman's ability to track the ball or ball carrier, but it truly is one of Rousseau's finest traits. Maybe it goes back to him playing wide receiver in high school, I don't know, but he seems to have a knack for it. We even see it in the run game. Here you see him set a strong edge, keep the tackle at arm's length, and keep his feet moving to leverage the ball. But his eyes are zeroed in on the ball the entire time. His leverage and eyes and his gap deter the running back from bouncing it, so the back cuts inside and his teammates rally. On this gap run, Rousseau spills the run to the Canes linebackers, but it doesn't just end there. Look at how he manages to find the ball and beat his man to make the tackle when the runner cuts it back. It's these types of instincts and awareness against the run or pass that excites Bills fans when we think about the direction the league is heading, especially at the quarterback position. Everybody does, you know, even, you know, Dable does it. A lot of the stuff behind the line, you know, the Isaiah McKenzie moving, where's the ball at? So guys that are able to get off the ball and not lose it and, and still be able to attack the passer. You know, offensive game has changed a lot where there's a lot of smoke and mirrors back there. The guys that instinctually have that feel 
we'll help them get an extra step that maybe they don't have athletically they can make up for. Rousseau is a type of edge player who can simultaneously win versus his man while processing the action behind the line of scrimmage, whether that's play action passes or those smoke and mirrors being mentioned. But more importantly, Rousseau's rush line is routinely to the quarterback's depth and no further. He tracks the ball and QB's depth very well. As I have mentioned, he's not the type of rusher that will blow by the quarterback and have to circle back. He's going to hit the arc of his rush, and when the QB steps up in the pocket or looks to escape, Rousseau is generally on his tail, thanks to his ability to track the ball. One of the keys to keeping Bryce Perkins under control is rushing with discipline and rushing with good vision. And you see right there, Gregory Rousseau does a good job stopping his rush when he gets quarterback depth, working back up in the pocket, and then just wrapping him up and putting him on the ground. This sort of discipline is important to the Bills' pass rush, as they generally like to only rely on four rushers. Defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier likes to drop as many defenders into coverage as possible. Having guys like Rousseau who maintain their rush lane integrity to contain quarterbacks to the pocket, or the skill set to track, pursue, and finish when the QB escapes are paramount. Lapses in those areas plagued the Bills in 2020. Last season, the Bills' defensive ends struggled to finish when getting to the quarterback. According to Sports Info Solutions, they had a 24% missed tackle rate in pass rush, which was the fifth highest mark in the league. Watch how Rousseau changes his angle to the quarterback to avoid the chip by the running back. Then how he transitions to power while maintaining his rush lane integrity with a nice line to the quarterback. Garvin is one-on-one -on -one and he forces the quarterback up in the pocket and Rousseau is there to clean up. He's got a knack. There, there's a lot of instinct and feel um, at, at various defensive positions, but this is another one. There's so many guys, like I said, that get drafted that are explosive, but they can't get the quarterback down or they can't find the quarterback. This guy, you know, you don't just luck into, you know, 15, 15 and a half sacks. Greg Rousseau was one of the best finishers in college football when it came to rushing the passer. Quarterbacks struggled to escape or get the ball out when pressured by him. In the 2019 season, he tallied 15 and a half sacks on his 46 pressures. That 35% rate was number one in the country among edge rushers with at least 40 pressures. I expect the Bills to immediately weaponize Rousseau in his rookie year. He will likely steal some snaps from Jerry Hughes and Mario Addison as both players are getting up there in age. Rousseau needs to continue to improve his play strength to help defend the run and could possibly add even more weight to his 6'6 frame. And he shouldn't have trouble doing that. He started to pack on weight as soon as he got to Miami and has since leaving. When you got here a couple years ago, how much did you weigh? Uh, like 215. And now? Like 254. Yeah. We think Greg is an on the come, you know, a, a rising player that will continue to grow into his body, continue to add strength. I told you he added 20 pounds to I me. Mean, he didn't just sit at home. He was training and getting ready for this, you know, this next step. Rousseau can get his feet wet early in his career, just like he did at Miami by playing rotational snaps at defensive end, where he can help the Bills convert pressures into sacks. But his biggest impact early may be as an interior rusher to gain mismatches for the defense and obvious passing downs. Rousseau has some special traits that will allow him to find a home in the Bills defensive line rotation and in the Queen City. He said it's quiet and he said it's a town that's all about football. Like it's just football, football, football. I'm blessed to be here, things worked out. I'm so happy to be a Bill. It's Bills Mafia all the way. I can't wait to get up there.